Hello everyone, this is Mr. Crozier. I'm going to go over our um, chapter 2 review problems here. All right, first off, continuous or differentiable, neither or both. Well, you have a left side and a right side. If I were to graph this right here at the point 2, there's this change in the function. And on the left side, I have this function. And on the right side, I have this function. So we need to see if they're continuous. Well, you plug in that number 2 up here. And yes, they come to the same number, so they're continuous. But then to be differentiable, we have to take the derivative. So I've taken this derivative here and plugged in 2 and got 1 and taken the derivative here and 3. So the derivative is just 3, but they're not differentiable because these are not the same. If these are the same, it's continuous. If these are the same, it's differentiable. On the slope here, where we've got to find the derivative, um, just remember power rule, power rule here, but when you do the power rule here, remember we're taking the derivative with respect to x, so we have a dy dx. Now in this problem, I used y prime for dy dx, just to make my work easier, a little bit clearer, you can use whichever one you want. Um, put all the primes on one side, factor it out, divide it over, simplify it, plug in, 3 for x, 2 for y, you'll get 4 ninths. Um, down here, we have an equation, and we plug in negative 1 here, and we have this point, this, this plugging in negative 1 is an input and an output. It gives us an x and y that we're going to use later on. The derivative is here, plugging in negative 1 to the derivative here, and the tangent line equation, I went ahead and used this formula right here, which is point slope y minus y1 is equal m minus or m times x minus x1 and I just plugged in my slope and I plugged in my point which is xy I plugged it in here and here and now I can simplify it into that a lot of times we'll start with this equation and then plug in a point here and here either way is fine there's our final answer all right the derivative well this is just the derivative of sine is cosine, and this is just a constant out there. You have to treat pi like a number. And here the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but in this case we have a, a chain rule situation where we need to take the chain rule, the derivative of this inside part. Over here the inside part is just x, so there is no chain rule extra piece added on except for the number 1. And then a lot of times what we'll do is we'll usually write this at the beginning in front of the sign. So take the derivative and just most people simplify it this way. All right, um, we have a function here and we're going to take this, take the derivative of this function in terms of dt. So the derivative here is dv dt. And then I had people asking, well, what's the derivative here? And if I take this over here, and if I do the power rule on this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this number by 3, which makes it 12 divided by 3 is 4, 4 with a pi, and then the r squared is gone. So that's how this changes into this derivative here. And then again, chain rule here. Plug in what you know, solve for what you don't. Um, it's an implicit equation. We have to go back and figure out what this is. So we divide all of these over that way. Difference quotient, uh, plug in x plus h for all the x's. And, and always check this. I mean, we, we can do the power rule immediately and get 4x plus 1. I mean, there's the power rule right there. So this has to match down here. If it doesn't match, we've done something wrong. All right, the derivative here, let's rewrite this as this. Um, multiply this down, subtract, and right here, um, again, chain rule. This is a com composite function. We need to take the chain rule of the inside part, which is negative 6. And again, we have to do the chain rule again. What's the derivative of this inside part? We can put parentheses around this, and this is the inside part. Well, that's just a 1. We usually leave that one off. We just simplify it down here. Um, this notation right here means take the second derivative. So take the first derivative take the second derivative there. So the second derivative is down there. Just do the power rule twice. 
On number nine, I'm gonna rewrite this as this thing to the fourth power. So now, I, now basically what I have is u to the fourth, and if I take the derivative, that's four u cubed times u prime. Well, there it is, four u cubed times u prime, and the derivative of sine three x is cosine three x. However, now I have a similar situation, sorry, a similar situation here where I have 3x. And now what's the derivative here? 3. You can stop when you get down to a constant because there's nothing else to take the derivative of. Multiply the 4 and the 3, and you have it. Um, instantaneous rate of change means find the slope. Well, I did low d high minus high d low over low squared. And I'm not going to bother simplifying this because all I have to do is substitute it in. So if I plug in a 3 here, 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 these are the numbers I get. Figure it out here and do this. You could simplify if you want to, but it's not necessary. If I'm plugging in, it's just as easy for me to plug in here than risk the chance of substitute or simplifying wrong. So if you're substituting in, don't bother simplifying. Uh, the first derivative, this is the left function, this is the right function, left d right plus right d left, and this guy is separate out here. And usually we put the letters in front of the, the trig functions, not always, but a lot of times you'll see it that way, so I rewrote it. Um, equation of the tangent line, well, that's y equals mx plus b. How do we find the slope? Well, we need a derivative. There's the derivative. At point zero, well, if I plug in a zero up here, I'm going to have zero minus cosine of, or cosine of zero, which is one, negative one. So there's my x and y. And I figured out b is three. Or wait, sorry, this was um, after I put after I found the derivative. Now I'm going to plug in zero, and I have three for my slope. So this value here is the slope, which goes down to there. And now I can plug in a point. And notice the difference here. I used y equals mx plus b to get to my equation. When we did this problem over here, I used this equation. They're both equations aligned. You need to know how to do both of them. All right, number 13. Um, take the derivative, dy dx, uh, put all your dy dx's on one side. I went ahead and factored it out, and this one goes over here. The thing to notice here is this term right here has a dy dx in it, so when I factor it out, it's there. But so does this term right here. This term has a dy dx in it, so when I factor it out, it's not gone, it's 1. So if I have this term and I divide away dy dx, I'm left with 6xy squared. And there's your 6. There's your xy squared. And when I divide it from here, it's 1. So make note of that. This one went to that side. There's my derivative. All right, the function. Uh, two stars mean it's a calculator problem. So let's try this one. y is equal to 500, 1 plus 15x divided by parentheses, 50 plus x squared, close both parentheses. You have to put parentheses around this denominator. All right, what's p prime of 21? Math 8, numerical derivative. Whoops, I don't want it here. I want to be on the home screen and do it. Math 8, ddx, variables, function, y1. I don't want to type in that equation again. If I press y equals, there's the equation. I don't want to type it in again, so I use that. And 21 on, and the sentence is at time 21 seconds. After 21 seconds, the population is decreasing because it's negative 12 bacteria per day. I don't know what the graph looks like, but I do know on day 21, there's some bacteria and the slope at that point is going down. It's negative at that point. All right, uh, number 15, we have a problem here, and 
we're going to, it's a DDT problem, it's a related rates, take the derivative with respect to T, and that's dy dt, 10x dx dt, 4 dx dt, and they tell you, usually these problems ask you to find something, so I have to find it, it's right there, and they tell you to plug it in. 10 is 10, and everything you need is given to you and solve for it. This is an explicit equation. You can go straight forward, get an answer is 48. Um, average rate of change is nothing but slope from your Algebra 1 class many years ago. It is 3 minus negative 1 over y, or f of 3 minus f, it's y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. It's the same exact thing that you were doing in your Algebra 1 class, nothing different. The slope is zero. What does that mean? Well, that means from this point to this point, negative 1 to 3 on this graph, there's no change. All right, but what is the instantaneous rate of change at 5? Well, for this, we need a derivative, and the derivative is 2x minus 2. Plug in 5 is 8. Well, what does that mean? That means on day 5, there's a point here, and the slope is up 8 over 1. All right, the height of an object here. Um, it's given by this equation. What is the acceleration? Acceleration is the second derivative. So you take the derivative, then take the derivative again, and plug in 3. I took the derivative, I took the derivative, I plugged in 3, did the math, and I have this. Now, this says calculator problem, but after looking at it, it's not a calculator problem. You should be able to do this math without a calculator. Um, the, there are ways to do this on the calculator, but honestly, it might be easier without a calculator. All right, uh, and the last one, number 18. A particle's position is given by this equation. Let's see what this looks like. Um, x cubed times sine x cubed is inside the parentheses. Be careful about that. Um, it should be in radians here. Yes, and over the interval, well, that's my domain, so that's negative 2 to 2. I'll just leave that alone for now. Hit graph, and that's what that particle is doing. It's going down, then up, then down, then up, then down, then up again. Maybe this was a bacteria. Down, then up, and down, then up. So the question is, at how many points in time is the particle at rest? Well, at all of these points right here, there is a horizontal tangent. So it's not going down or up at those five points. And you can assume that this is a nice, neat curve here. It doesn't go flat, so there's only one point there. It's a nice, neat curve. One, two, three, four, five points of no change. Well, compare negative one, V of negative one, and V of one. Well, here's one, and at that point, the number of bacteria is the same. So it is equal. The output is the same on both of those days, on day one and day negative one. Let me change the window a little bit so you can get a better picture. Let's only go up to three. Right here is day one. At day one, the, it, the level is the same. So they're the same. But this ask, this ask about the output or the position, this ask about the velocity. And the velocity on negative one, the graph is going down, so it's negative. At positive one, the graph is going up, so it's positive. So this velocity over here is lower than this velocity here. This is a negative slope, this is a positive slope. The outputs are the same, the slope is different. All right, hope this helps with your chapter two review problems.